What's up, guys? What's up, guys? I wanted to make a little video uh, about a method that I learned somewhere a long time ago that I've used for a long time on how to get better at drawing. I show this a lot in my classes, but it's five steps that you can apply uh, and really see quick improvement in your work. Um, one of the biggest struggles as an artist is feeling like you're not getting better or, or uh, not being able to measure it in any particular way. And this method will help you see growth really quickly. Um, so it's a five-step method. And today I'm going to start with uh, something I want to get better at drawing. And that is the Irish Wolfhound in Mythica uh, issue eight. Uh, we actually introduced it in issue seven. Uh, Magnus has a big hound uh, named Augie. And uh, the Irish Wolfhound and the Scottish Deerhound are very similar. So I kind of go back and forth uh, as far as, you know, when I was looking for references. But here's how uh, I learn how to get better at drawing. And you're going to be seeing this live with me. Uh, so you can try it along for yourself if you'd like. So step one uh, is to... Grab a piece of paper and whatever it is that you think that you want to get better at, you're just going to try to draw what you think it looks like out of your head without any reference. So that's what I'm going to do uh, now. Let's see, which one of these do I want? Yeah, this one's just fine. All right, so um, I'll get my brush down here a little bit. There we go. I'm going to try and draw big enough that you can see here. Uh, so I'm just going to go with a uh, side view uh, because it's important to have some proportions here. I'm going to get a chest and then I think a little bit smaller one. And so uh, I know that uh, I've, I've drawn dogs before, um, so I kind of know a little bit about their anatomy. But this is really going to help, hopefully. Um, and what I'm going to be learning here mostly is what proportions make a uh, a deer hound specifically, not just any dog. Okay, so I'm going to give him some some big old paws. And then, as far as the face goes. I think it's a little bit shorter than that. Okay. So as you can see, I, I really don't have the proportions of, of this uh, nailed down. I kind of am just guessing a little bit. Let me make my eraser a little bit bigger too. For later, how we go. Okay. What I do know is that uh, I want to get capture that kind of scruffy look in my sketch. And remembering that the whole point of this is to just uh, get better. Uh, you don't want to like spend too much time detailing because you're going to go back and you're going to draw this a couple couple more times as we're going to see. Uh, I think. I'm going to give this guy a little bit of goatee neck, right? Goatee right there. Don't really know how much of this we see. Okay, so there we go. And when I look at this, uh, my proportions are showing that the, the tailbone circle is very similar to the head and that the chest uh, circle is about one and a half times the size of the head. And that's just me, you know, making this up. Uh, another thing I'm looking at is the height. Okay. Um, I can see if I have this this head circle. He's, he's standing in a very upright, like a show dog. Uh, so that's one. Not very warmed up today. Let me zoom in a little bit. There we go. Redo some of these circles. That's why. Move my Cintiq a little bit closer. There we go. We get two, three, four, five. 
Okay. Now at this point, I'm just guessing. I don't really know for sure what I'm looking at. I have looked at a couple of pictures now and again, because obviously I drew uh, the hound in the first issue, but it, with those, I was really just kind of referencing a picture. Um, and that's what the whole point of this is, is uh, there's referencing and then there's studying. And those study t are what we're going to be talking about right now. So this is step one, right? Step two is to uh, go and get uh, a reference to choose from. And uh, I've already pulled one up, but I was trying to, to not look at it uh, at all, uh, as very little as possible. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up that reference. We can see here that uh, – let me just flip this over and see how close or far away it is uh, from my drawing. Okay, so flip horizontal. Uh, so we can see, I, I can tell by looking at it that it's a little bit longer uh, in the body, a little bit separation. So I might need to uh, try to develop a formula for how many heads long it is. Um, and it looks much thicker uh, in the legs, especially the front legs. Okay, um, The front of the head, uh, the snout doesn't look right either. Uh, so we're going to we're going to work on that, okay? So here's step two. Let me just go ahead and make a new a new piece here. Um, step two right there. And what I want to do is I want to try and get uh, both of these where I can draw as big as possible but still see them on the page. So let me get my, rid of my layers. And I think that's about as good as I can go here. So... What I want to do for step two is really focus on the outline or the contour, the shape of the uh, the dog or uh, the hound as a whole. Um, and I'll explain why as I'm sketching this. Now I'm trying to make these lines as fluid as possible uh, so that my muscle memory remembers how it flows. Um, if you draw, you know, the entire outline where you're making these little, you know, hatch marks, like for, as if you're making hair, it'll look more realistic, but it's harder for your brain to remember the contour as one fluid uh, memory, right? Uh, so I'm just trying to create the silhouette uh, as best as I can, and I'm kind of studying as I go. So this goes up, this goes out. This comes down. Oh, oops, let's fix that. I like that. And then this angles up and over. And then we have eyes here. Okay, almost looks a little bit like a horse uh, snap, but a little bit shorter. Um, his mouth is open in this one, so it's kind of throwing it off a little bit. But right, I'm only focused on trying to feel. Uh, that shape, okay? And I might do that a couple times. So uh, let me erase that again. And try it again. Right? Again, what I'm focusing on is just capturing the overall shape of the thing. Okay? If you guys hear that squealing, Sam got a new toy, so he's very excited. Yes, I know Sam. All right. So even there, that one already is looking a little bit better. I'm, I'm noticing uh, a farther separation here uh, and a smoother line here. Okay, so that's really what I'm focused on at this point is what the shape looks like. And here's why that's important. When you uh, think about people that you knew in high school or something like that, if you've ever encountered the phenomenon of like recognizing someone from across a crowded hallway 
and their back is facing you, uh, it's because you recognize their shape. Um, and our brains are designed to remember shapes and large objects quickly. And, and the first thing that we'll forget are some of the mi minute details. So you might forget uh, the color of uh, a friend's eyes from high school, right? But you might be able to spot them uh, years later from the, their shape because you'll remember that. Um, and so I might forget some of the intricate details of a particular uh, thing, but I'll remember the shape uh, pretty, for a pretty long time. So I'm trying to embed that into my brain uh, as much as possible. Okay. Now I'm also going to add in some ears here. Okay. So let's move on to step number three. And I'll go ahead and just keep this on the same layer. Step three. Now for this one, I'm also going to use this reference, but I'm going to move it down a little bit so I can put it down here as well. Okay. Come back up here. Turn my layers off. All right. So again, let me zoom in uh, on this one more time. Just like that. That's about perfect. All right. So this round, uh, what I'm looking at doing is I'm focusing on the shapes or forms that make up this particular uh, animal. So uh, for most mammals, we have a head, a torso, and a hip uh, section. At, and so I always kind of start with those. Um, so I'm kind of ghosting where I feel like that, that circle is. Oops, why am I so shaky? I'm gonna need to eat some more maybe. I'm a little shaky today. So, okay. And now I'm looking at that big uh, barrel chest and how, how much room that takes up, okay? And, and then from back here, uh, I'm trying to make sure I have plenty of room. And, and I see now that uh, that, um, that tail area, the waist area, sorry, is slightly bigger than the head, whereas the first one I drew up here, uh, they were about the same size, and it made him look, you know, quite a bit smaller. So that's one thing I'm noticing right away. Um, so then, let's take a look at a few of the other shapes because we want to make sure that we get a nice uh, separation here. And sometimes, uh, if I'm really having a hard time, you know, figuring it out, uh, I might even come over here to the original and sketch those shapes over the top of it and kind of build that muscle memory into my brain uh, a little bit and, and feel the, the uh, size of those circles in comparison to each other. And then also I might take note that there is almost a, a full circles distance between the head and the body. So I'm gonna make a note of that here too, okay? Um, and then in between here, uh, we have, you know, any number of shapes that you want to, want to use, um, but I like to use something that I can try to measure. Um, so if I use another head shape, uh, like right here in between the two, I can see that not only it does that measure the distance, but it also tells me all three different uh, changes in ratio. Um, this one is the smallest, this one's about one and a half times bigger, and this one uh, is almost twice as twice as big. Okay, so I'm making these little notes of the shapes and also uh, of how big those shapes are. So I can see that this one's big. This one is going to be about half that size, and then this one's going to be uh, about one and a half times that size. Okay, but that, that's just giving me some proportions. I still need to throw in a couple of the uh, the body forms. So um, over the top of that, I might put this, this leg here in a circle. This is like a cone shape, right? I'm just trying to memorize these, these shapes. Um, this one comes down shoulders here. And we got one, two, kind of bends a little bit. Okay, now I'll, I'll do another measurement here for size. 
this one comes down like this. We have a bend, and then we have another one, right? I'm just trying to break this down into the most basic uh, shapes. So these two thigh muscles uh, are very prominent. Okay. I also might want to make a mental note that uh, this this back barrels up like so at an angle. Okay. So you get the idea. I'm just trying to break this down into its basic uh, shapes as much as I possibly can. Um, and also take some proportion notes along the way. Uh, let's see. One other thing I want to make note of is exactly uh, this shape right here. And I can see that uh, it is uh, a slightly flared out square that appears to be... Um, a little over half the distance of that. So if I measure that out to here, then I can flare out that square. And there we go. Okay. So I'm just trying to make those little mental notes. All right. The other reason why this is uh, important to know is that later on, when I want to change the positioning of this character to say, have them facing me, then I know I can start with this big barrel shape. I know that the head is half that size, so uh, I can make that, you know, here, uh, and it, you know, allow for some foreshortening, uh, and then the back. I have those, you know, three pieces there, and I can start to uh, piece this together and create a uh, same character from different positions. Okay, so that's another reason why creating and shapes is important, right? All right, on to step number four. Step number four. Again, I'm going to uh, grab this reference and I'm going to move it down. There we go. Come back up here. This time through, I am going to try and uh, use all those tools I used above, but then also add in some important details. So um, I'm going to start lightly with putting in the under uh, the underdrawing. Here's the head shape. I know that that's about twice as long, and then we have a barrel-shaped chest that's twice as long as that, and then another one, and then a one and a half times, and then I can start to connect this with the shape that I've, I've learned. Add in my half piece there. Of connect this out. One thing that's not in this photo that uh, I'm going to want to do some research on uh, later is where the uh, tail goes and how long it is and the proportions of the tails, things like that. But um, so what I'm doing right now for this particular one. Is I'm, I'm starting off by just laying in the foundation like I did above, uh, thinking about where those particular parts are. And then this time, here's my basic shape. This time I want to focus on the pertinent details, the details that make this particular animal uh, the animal that it is, right? I don't want to be confused for a horse or anything like that or another type of dog, another breed of dog. So I want to get some of those key features that really make it look uh, like a wolfhound. So um, I'm going to start with the eye, and we have some some fur around the eye and some darkness. It's very, very dark in that eye area because there's lots of shadow. We have a lot of fur around the nose, okay, and then we're going to put in 
lots of fur here. He's got this beautiful chin hair. Right. Uh, just in this particular case, it's mostly going to be the directional flow of the fur uh, and where uh, it flares out with the really important like elbow bits, the stuff that really lets you know, you know where it's at, where those body parts are at. So it's not just a big stump. I'm also going to try and pay attention here to the ear this time and see how it kind of flops and bends. At least that one does. I might research that one some more too from a different photo. Okay. Now this is a pretty uh, well-groomed uh, hound, I gotta tell you. Most of the time they, they look pretty wiry. So I'm probably gonna try to emphasize that a little bit. So I'm, I'm taking note that like the elbow uh, and the, the chest are kind of in line with each other right there. So take a note of that. Okay. And I'm just putting down a few of these details. I'm not trying to go in there and fully shade everything. Uh, I'm just trying to make note of like all the important things that make it look like uh, a hound. And the one that I feel is missing is the tail. So we might have to go reference that a little bit. Okay, let's put a little bit of shadow, a little bit of grass. I don't see his feet. I don't really know how big the feet are either I'm, uh, on this particular image, so I'm kind of guessing. Um, there's a little bit of jawline that comes up in here we want to see. Okay. All right, so those are the details. Let's see if I can grab uh, a, a picture that has uh, a tail in it. <laughs> I got some good pictures here. Because um, I like to look at a lot of different references to do studies. I love the facial expression in that one. And the scale on this one. You see a little bit of a tail there. You see how big he looks. A lot of their tails are hiding. There we go. He's got it tucked in under there on that one. So, looks like it's pretty long in most cases. And comes down to almost that, that uh, heel. So yeah, I'll use this one as an example. So uh, if you straighten that out, you can see it kind of comes back to, to the heel a little bit. So um, for now, I'm just gonna put that in there. And I know that it ended somewhere around here and I'm gonna add that in, okay? I might reference that some more later, but this gives me the general idea, okay? All right, so now I've done three different studies of this particular character uh, or, or animal, and so now the fifth step is to turn all of this off. And now let's draw this uh, we we'll found from what we learned in our memory, okay? So I'll, draw, I'll actually uh, blow this up a little bit here in a second. Uh, so I'm going to start with that head shape. I'm going to draw a little bigger, too. I know that the head is about two spaces from the body, and the body or the chest barrel is about twice as big. Okay, I got a snout that is a little over halfway, an eye. This curves down. Then we have a space between that's about the size of another head, and then a one and a half time tail, and this curves like so. Then we have the shoulder coming down, and then went back. You can see I'm using a little bit more shorthand now to really uh, try and get the underdrawing in there quickly. Okay. And the more that I draw this, the more I'm going to be able to emphasize uh, some of the things. So I'm going to start like emphasizing these feet. I might start making them pretty big, almost like 
Scooby-Doo feet because I feel like it makes him feel even bigger. We got our tail here coming down. Okay, so the next thing is the details. Uh, the head feels like it's still a little bit far away, so let me uh, let me try that a little bit smaller. There we go. There we go. All right. So now I'm going to start putting in those details. I'm going to just sort of lightly uh, erase this a little bit. Just to lighten those lines up a little bit. And now I'll go through and start putting in some of these details. We know that the jaw comes up here. we got the ear that comes down. Gonna put really dark in here. Feel like that's still a little bit long. What we're gonna do when I'm done with this is I'm not, so I'm not gonna I'm trying to kind of the I can talk. I'm going to try not to detail this too much because I want to finish up and then compare it to the very first drawing that I did. Okay. Get some tufts of fur going out here. We want that elbow and that chest to be about in the same place. I feel like my brush got darker, but no, I guess I'm just pushing harder. All right, down here to the feet. So right now I'm adding in some of those details that uh, I remembered from the last study. Putting in some of these little details here. All right, let's sort of sketch in a, some depth by Sketching in that back back leg a little bit. And I'll shade that in a little bit. All right. So I think that's pretty pretty good place to stop uh, as far as the detail goes. So now what I want to see is, is this drawing better? in proportion than my original drawing. So let's take a look. We have the original here and then where's number one? There it is. All right, so let's take this one and move it over. Okay, I'll try to get them where they're about the same height. Now I'll zoom in. And there you go. This is step five, right? One to five. So in the end, uh, you can see that the proportions of my first attempt at this, uh, the, the back end was uh, way too sh close to the chest making it feel uh, like a, a much uh, sh shorter dog. Um, and the head was a little bit too big in comparison to the chest. So those are the type of things that will stick in your brain from doing these studies. And uh, the other thing about this method is, like I was saying at the beginning, 
there's a, a sense of growth. I feel like I know how to draw this uh, particular animal a little bit better now. Um, so imagine if you went through and you did something like that for uh, all of these, just filled up a page studying their shapes, uh, their, their contours and their details. By the time you finished this whole page, you'd have a pretty good knowledge of it. And then you could draw it from, from any direction that you wanted. So that's, that's the five step method. Hope you found that helpful. Uh, look for more tutorials uh, and tips uh, at our Patreon slash Action Line Studios. Uh, we have Tutorial Tuesdays. We have behind the scenes content. So check it out. Thank you so much. See you, see you soon.